Well, good afternoon. I'm King County Executive Dow Constantine. Thank you for being here as we celebrate the opening of the new Columbia Street Transit Corridor. Now, as you can see from uh, the fresh paint that is here on Columbia, we have really rolled out the permanent red carpet for you and for all of our transit riders. I am very excited to be joined by Mayor Jenny Durkin, by King County Council Member Joe McDermott, by the head of Washington State Ferries, Amy Scarton, and by King County Metro's General Manager, Rob Gannon. The Columbia Corridor is a testament to partnership. Partnership between King County, the City of Seattle, and the State of Washington, all working together to better serve our communities. We're here because of our shared vision, a shared vision for the region's future, to move people safely and efficiently throughout uh, the entirety of King County and the Central Puget Sound, to support a healthy economy with opportunity for all, and to protect our air, our land, and our water. The new Columbia Corridor embodies that vision of a safe, equitable, and sustainable future. One uh, that really is a testament to the ingenuity and the innovation of this region. With this new path, the commutes of 26,000 people every day will be smoother and more reliable, whether they're traveling to and from Ballard or Burien, West Seattle White Center, or more. And it will make those trips between work and home and school and medical appointments and commerce, that is to say shopping, a little bit easier. And hopefully faster, too. But just as important as speed, this project links together many ways to get around. Metro buses and the King County water taxi, link light rail and Washington State ferries, all within a few blocks of one another, making transit connections throughout the entire region. Smart transit planning, like this corridor, also lets riders avoid delays, delays that are caused by accidents or peak commutes or sporting events or concerts. And if you want to go green, you want to go transit. Every single week, weekday, transit here in King County takes 190,000 cars off the road. That means cleaner air here locally, and it also means we're doing our part to take on the global climate crisis. Opening these bus lanes here on Columbia Street will help everyone to move greener, faster, and to be more connected to all the transit systems across our region by land and by sea. And step-by-step -step projects like this are ensuring that if you want a reliable, fast way to get around King County, you want to choose Metro. So thank you again for being here, and it is my honor to introduce to you the mayor of the city of Seattle, Jenny Durkin. Thank you so much, Dow. Okay, can we just take a moment first? Look at this weather, right? It's amazing, and you can see the sky. And you can see the sky, the viaduct is gone. This is one of the many ways that taking down that viaduct is gonna make this city and this region better. Um, being reconnected again with the heart of Puget Sound, making it easier for commuters, I really want to thank everybody who's been involved in this project. You'll hear from the speakers today. I've got my uh, Secretary of Department of Transportation, Sam Zimbabwe there. Thank you very much. I know a lot of our advocates who have helped us over the years are here, including Transportation Coalition. I see you hiding back there. Um, thanks, Alex, for everything you've done. In this 21st century America, cities have to be places where people can get around in a much more connected place. They've got to be livable, vibrant, and walkable. We are making Seattle that place where the first choice people can make is to take transit, bike, walk, or roll. Since taking office, we have moved more cars off 3rd Avenue and made it transit only. We know that transit priority lanes keep people and goods moving. And I am really happy, if you haven't heard it yet, the Senate passed our block the yes. box legislation. So we will also have another tool to help not only our people on buses, 
but the people walking, pedestrians and disabled people trying to get through. And this Columbia Street pathway will improve the commute times for in so many places in this area. None of this, though, would have been possible without our Transportation Benefit District. I want to thank the voters of Seattle, but because you gave us that, we could partner with Metro and King County to make sure that we could keep improving corridors. I love that Dow called this the red carpet. Someone else called it fresh Elmo because it's the color of Elmo's paint. Um, but we know that Metro buses need bus lanes. Um, and over the last two years, we have increased bus service here in Seattle by 36%. 36% because of that Transportation Benefit District and the vote of voters. We've added more red bus lanes like the ones we're celebrating today. And we've provided transit passes to 14,000 students and low-income neighbors. Those transit passes have been invaluable for them to get to shopping, to their jobs, or just as a passport to this great city and region. I want to thank our partners again, both at Metro and at the county, for working so hard to make sure that every step we are doing, we're thinking about how do we create more connectedness for everyone in this region? How do we make it easy for people to get out of their cars to get to where they need to go? We are also really glad that we're here. You can see the mountains peeking out. Um, we plan this day, it's like this every February. Um, but really, we are creating a waterfront park for all, 20 acres that will be reformed here. And Columbia Street has been one of the first priorities we invested in so that we could get better mobility through this area. Opening this new street and transit pathway is just the first of many ribbon cuttings we're going to have down here. Later this spring, we'll be opening Pier 62, a public park for all of Seattle, um, and that's just north of the aquarium. Many of you know it where the old concerts used to be, and we're hoping to launch it in a really fun way for the city of Seattle. Um, in close, I just want to say thank you. You also get to hear now from the county council member who has really done so much in this area and has been a great partner um, sits on the Sound Transit Board and is really dedicated to make sure that we as a city have more mobility. Before Joe McDermott steps up there again, I just want to thank all the team at, at SDOT. It takes so many people to make this come to realization, but they're working every day through these corridors to make it easier for people to walk, walk, walk bike and roll, get on the buses and get through town. King County Metro, the Washington State Department of Transportation, our Washington State Ferries, the Port of Seattle, all of us together are building a terrific area in this region. And the more connectedness, the more transit we have, the better it is. And from that, I'll give you Joe McDermott. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Durkin. On a bright, sunny day like this, with a great news like the Columbia Street Transit Corridor, it's easy to feel like one in a million, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Even better. I know that I'm one in 26,000. <laughs> the riders will be using this corridor every day. This is my bus stop. This is my bus route. And that of so many other neighbors throughout West Seattle, South and Southwest King County. It's been a rough go over the last several months since we've taken down the viaduct and been rerouting and rerouted again to try to streamline and improve service. It's been a challenge. In fact, I've gotten angry emails from constituents stuck in bus traffic on their way home on Thursday and Friday nights. And I bought myself only a little bit of credibility when I could reply to those emails from my bus stuck behind them, assuring them they would be home before I would. That's why it's so exciting to be unveiling and opening the, the corridor today and opening it on Saturday, because it will streamline and make more efficient the movement of buses and people in and out of downtown into West Seattle and Southwest King County. This is a great partnership with the city, with Metro Transit and the county. We're connecting for the first time in a, a real full and meaningful way to Washington State Ferries. Great opportunity, great excitement, and I'm pleased to be able to introduce the director of Washington State Ferries, Amy Scarton. Amy. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Joe. Again, I'm Amy. And on behalf of Governor Inslee and State Secretary of Transportation, Roger Millar, I'm here to celebrate the great partnership 
between the state and the city and the county to bring our citizens yet more green and new ways to travel around the state. It's fitting that the mayor mentioned the absence of the viaduct and the opportunities it's gonna bring to our citizens. And it's also fitting to mention that right in front of us is the single busiest ferry terminal on the west coast of North America. Every year, more than 10 million people come in through Coleman Dock, and now Columbia is an even more fitting gateway to the city. We are all working to bring greener and newer ways of traveling to our citizens and getting folks from a bus in Kitsap County or a water taxi out of Bremerton or a water taxi out of King County and into Coleman Dock on a state ferry as they walk on, as they bike on, as they're on a transit bus or in a van pool, we want them to complete their trip through more public transportation because it is greener for us and our environment. I'm also glad that the mayor mentioned ribbon cuttings because this is one of many for this year. This is one of many for the waterfront. We're working really hard with our partners the city, the county, the office of the waterfront to bring you a reimagined working waterfront for Seattle. One of the most exciting things that we are working on here on the waterfront is we are electrifying it. We are bringing you an electric state ferry system. We are bringing you an electric waterfront in the city of Seattle. And we will soon have folks arriving here on clean, green, and quiet electric ferries, hopping on some of the many electric metro buses that we are aggressively pursuing. We're here to let you know that climate change can be tackled and Washington State is leading the way. Thank you, and I'd now like to introduce Rob Gannon, CEO of Metro. Well, thank you everyone for being here. I, th I think it's only appropriate that um, just a couple weeks ago, I was with the executive announcing our program to expand our battery electric bus fleet, our green fleet, and here today we're on red bus lanes. So this is the, the symbol of the new metro, where we're going, innovating by bringing battery electric vehicles, partnering with cities, partnering to provide better service to the region and people that are traveling through this vital corridor. My wife doesn't know it, but I'm so excited about red bus lanes that we're going to paint our house bus lane red uh, i want to give one final thank you to everybody for being here today uh, to executive constantine and mayor durkin especially for their leadership in helping make this uh, a reality today to our partners at washington state department of transportation and a special shout out to our colleagues at the seattle department of transportation uh, Without the hard work of the road crews, the construction crews, the transportation planners, all the people that devoted years really in planning this corridor, we wouldn't be here today. Uh, it is not that exciting to have red paint on a bus lane, but it is very exciting to recognize that come Monday, 26,000 passengers will be up and down this corridor with a smoother and more reliable transportation experience. This doesn't look like a transportation hub, but in effect, this corridor represents the best of what the city and the county can partner to provide. Access to public transportation, access to the ferries, access to improved pedestrian corridors, and access to the vital, vibrant waterfront that represents some of the very best this region has to offer. I'm very proud of the folks at King County Metro for all their hard work. This is but one area where we are working to improve the overall service that we offer to the region as it grows. We know there are many more demands out throughout the entire county. This is one step in getting to each and every one of those. Our vision is to grow transit service according to our long range plan by doubling the amount of service we offer today by 2040. That is a tall order indeed, but it is absolutely essential if we're going to make this region thrive. That is our commitment to improve service every day, and sometimes it means improving service with something as simple but complicated as red paint on a lane dedicated to the throughput of buses in a very busy city. Thank you all for being here. Thanks again to all our partners. We're really excited. 
And just let me remind you, a year ago, we wouldn't have been able to stand here because there was snow on the ground. So that's another benefit of where we are today. Thank you all. Okay, Rob and your Metro folks stay close. The SDOT folks stay close. We'd be happy to take any questions you might have. Talk that it would be a countywide uh, thing next rather than a city. What can you tell us about what's in the works? Because without money for buses, there's no buses. Here. Right. So you'll recall six years ago, uh, King County attempted to uh, achieve additional countywide funding for Metro Transit and failed. The city then moved forward to the Transportation Benefit District and funded much of the increased service that Mayor Durkin was able to talk about today. That measure is expiring. Uh, the city needs to renew its funding and continue to grow transit service, but we are turning back to the rest of the cities in the county and saying, do we want to go again with a uh, countywide uh, funding measure? So the members of the King County Council, the mayors and councils of our 38 other cities are in the middle of that conversation right now. In fact, I'll be uh, addressing the Sound Cities Association monthly gathering tonight. And we will be making a decision in the next few weeks about the direction we'll take for this year, recognizing that over the long term we have to have increased funding if we're going to meet the goals of doubling ridership that Rob Gannon talked about and, uh, and maintaining uh, in the face of a growing population, growing traffic, the ability of people to freely move back and forth in our region. Others? I've got a metro question too. Um, this, of course, is the first step toward, you know, a new way for people to get, especially from our part of town, West Seattle. Um, can you talk a little bit about, are there any other changes in the immediate future or until the, you know, the full Alaskan way opens is this pretty much it? Well, to answer that question really speaks to the complexity of our system, right? Connecting West Seattle to downtown is just but one feature of moving people throughout. So there's a whole host of projects in combination with the city of Seattle and their capital projects but also just looking at the region and how we expand service. I'm happy to take some of those specific questions offline and our director of service planning is here and he can answer some of those specifics and give some real detail about what comes next. But there are many projects underway, again, not just here in the city, but throughout the region to improve the way transit service is delivered. Anyone else? Well, thank you so much for joining us here today, and let's f look forward to smoother, faster commutes, especially for you, Joe McDermott, in the near future. Thanks so much. <laughs>